But the ordinary Palestinians rose up because you denied them basic rights. I lived there. It was apartheid. It was racism. It was endemic. It was rotten. Absolutely, I was shocked within weeks of living there to see how you treated Palestinian people. And isn't it the fact that the law of return, which is the basic law of the Israeli state, is a racist apartheid law because it confers rights on Jews that it denies to Palestinians. Uh, it allows, for example, if I was Jewish and had never stepped foot in Israel, I could claim citizenship there tomorrow, but six million people whose origins are in what you now call Israel, who were forced out in 1947 or 48, do not have that right. Isn't that part of the reason why the Palestinians are in dispute with Israelis? Because you deny them the right to return to their homes and to their land and to their villages, and that they have a legitimate uh, claim, even under international law, to return, but you deny them that right. Why do you deny them that right? And why do you give that right to other people who have no connection whatsoever with the land, whether you call it Israel or whether you call it Palestine? Uh, why do you continue to seize land, if you're serious about Oslo and the two-state solution, why do you continue to seize land, which under that agreement is land designated to be Palestinian land. 500,000 people, most of which has taken place since Oslo. You allow that to happen. Why do you allow it to happen if you're serious about giving this land to the Palestinians? Uh, it's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, and it just, you, you must, are you not just taking us, uh, Ambassador, for idiots? That you can say with a straight face, we're serious about peace, but while we're serious about peace, we're going to seize Palestinian land. And you expect the Palestinians to just sit back and do nothing about that. And the world to accept that that is, uh, an, acceptable, uh, is an acceptable way to behave. And you asked earlier on, what, could we have some constructive solutions? Um, now you know what the Palestinian people have been asking for. Far less even than uh, s some people would ask for. Because I believe the whole apartheid system should be dismantled. But what they've asked for is to lift the siege of Gaza. Just to lift the siege of Gaza. Let them have an airport. Let them have uh, ports. Let them not be dictated to by a government for whom they do not vote as to what can go in and out of their territories, whether they will have power, whether they will have clean water, whether they will have medicine. What makes you think you're allowed to have nuclear weapons and the fourth biggest army in the world and visit destruction on the, the people of Gaza, but they have no right to defend themselves? They have no territorial sovereignty could I, could over I, that, that land. Would you ask questions, please? They 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 How do you justify that? Yeah. All right. How do you justify those uh, double standards? And very lastly, uh, very lastly Ambassador, uh, people like uh, Bishop Tutu, Nelson Mandela, and I would certainly subscribe, uh, describe your state as a uh, apartheid state with different laws for people depending on their race or religion. Uh, now, isn't that just the case? That, for example, at checkpoints going into the West Bank, there's a channel if you're Israeli or European and there's a channel if you're Arab. Just because you're Arab. If you came into Dal Aaron, and they stopped you and said, are you Jewish? Oh no, sir, you can't come in through the same entrance uh, as Irish people or European people because you're Jewish. You would call that racism and apartheid. Yeah. But yet, you practice that. You practice that with your checkpoints and your military okay. uh, barriers and your apartheid wall. How can you justify that? 